when you see an equation that has a fraction and that a lot of people start freaking out a little bit uh, and the truth is nobody really likes fractions when we look at a problem like this if we'd like to uh, that has a, a set of fractions in it one of the first things that would be really nice is if we can get rid of the fractions altogether and there's a really neat technique that we can do that um, so if you see an equation like this we'd like keep in mind our goal is still what we've had in uh, when we were working with the equations before we still have a variable we still want to get that variable by itself so we need to get rid of everything else um, according to the techniques we learned in the last lesson we could subtract three-fourths from each side and then multiply both sides by two to finish getting the x by itself. And that still works, but we've got to use a lot of fraction rules to do that. So here, what I'd like to show you is a way that you can get rid of the fractions before solving the equation, which makes the work a lot simpler. Basically, remember, any time that you do something to an equation, an equation is balanced. So anything you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. What we can do if we have a fraction in a problem is we can multiply by a very clever number that's going to allow that denominator to get canceled out. So for example, if I look here at 2, if I multiplied this equation by 2, notice that the two, the 2's would cancel out here. But if you multiply an equation by 2, you have to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So multiplying by 2, you'd have to do it here and here. So that's the basic technique of what we're going to do. Multiplying by 2 is not really going to work here because while it will cancel out this 2, it won't cancel out the 4 and it won't cancel out the 3. So what we'd like to do is kind of think, well, what number could we multiply by that would allow all of those different values to cancel out? It's kind of like looking for what the common uh, denominator would be in a problem. So if you had 2 and 4 and 3, a common denominator that would work for all of those would be 12. So what I would do in a problem like this is I would go through and I would multiply both sides of the equation by 12. Let's look, take a look at what this would mean. On the left hand side, keep in mind that when you multiply something by a group with a plus, we have to distribute. So when we really multiply by 12, remember we're multiplying this by 12 and the 3 fourths by 12, you've got to multiply each term by 12. And over here, we're going to multiply this by 12. So we haven't changed the problem because we're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation, but we have this. Remember, 12 is like 12 over 1. So when we go here, what we'd like to do is we'd like to see these things kind of cancel and reduce out. So when we multiply by 12 here, the 2 goes into that 6 times. And what I'm left with is 6 times x, no fraction anymore because the denominator canceled out. When I come here, when I multiply by 12, notice that 4 goes into 12 evenly three times. And so here I can cancel out the 12 and I'm left with a 3 that when I multiply by the 3 that was there before on the top, I get plus 9. And for the last part, when I multiply by 12, 3 goes into 12 there as well, goes in four times evenly, and what I'm left with is 4 times 1, which is 4. So what I have here, 6x plus 9 equals 4, is a much simpler version of the equation. There's It's equivalent because I did the same thing to both sides of the equation up here. And even better, it has no fractions in it. So at this point, then, we can use our reverse order of operations then to go about getting that x variable alone. First, get rid of anything that's added or subtracted. So in this case, we're going to subtract 9 from each side. We end up with 6x equals negative 5. And then last of all, we're going to need to divide both sides by 6. And we end up with x equals negative 5 sixths. Remember, if, you're, if, you're, um, if your denominator doesn't divide in evenly, just think of it as your answer as a fraction and make sure it's reduced and simplified before you're finished. Um, so this concept and policy when we're trying to solve an equation is if you have a, an equation with a fraction in it, the first thing you want to do is get rid of the fractions. And we're going to do that again by looking at multiplying by something that's going to get that denominators, that's going to get all the denominators in the problem to cancel out. All right, so let's look. We're going to use this technique on a few problems here, so let's let's give a couple a try. When I'm looking at number 2, notice that as I'm looking at the denominators, I have a denominator of 2 and 5 and 20. If I want to find something that's going to get all of these to cancel out, again, if you like to think of what would a common denominator be, because that number everything will go into, uh, in this case, 20 is actually going to be plenty. 20 will work to cancel the 20 out, of course. 5 goes into 20 and 2 also goes into 20. So what I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to multiply both sides by 20. Keep in mind that when you multiply both sides of an 
an equation by something, you have to multiply each individual term. So here I'm going to have to multiply the 20 by the x minus 5 over 2. And then it's minus, I'm going to have to multiply the 20 by the 2x plus 3 over 5. 3 over 5. And then on the last side, I'm going to have to multiply the 20 by the 3 over 20. Now let's go through, cancel out the denominators, and see what our new equivalent equation is going to look like. 2 goes into 20 10 times, and I have 10 times x minus 5. Minus 5 goes into 20 4 times, and I have 4 times 2x plus 3. And on the other side, 20 goes into 20 once, and I have 1 times 3, which is 3. A couple of things to notice here. Notice that because we had a group of values up here at the top, that you have to think of multiplying the 10 by both of those, so you'd need to distribute that out. Over here, the minus is what's going with the 4, so when we go through and multiply the 4 by what's left, think, make, you want to make sure you're thinking of it as multiplying it as a minus 4 by each of those. And kind of writing it this way helps me remember that if there's more than one thing on top that I need to multiply by. So here I'm going to use the distributive property. 10 times x gives me 10x, minus 10 times 5 is 50. Next I'm going to distribute the negative 4 through, which is going to give me a minus 8x and a minus 12 equals 3. Now we have really a linear equation. Because there's more than one x in the problem, now that they're out of parentheses, now I can actually put those things together. 10x minus 8x is 2x. And we can combine the like terms here because they're on the same side of the equation. Minus 50 and minus 12 gives me minus 62. Then I want to finish solving my equation to get the x alone. Uh, the weakest or farthest away value here is the 62, so I'm going to add 62 to each side of the equation, which gives me 2x equals 65. And then to finish getting the x alone, I can divide both sides by 2. 2 does not go into 65 evenly. You can leave that as an improper fraction like that. You can divide it and get 32 and a half, um, if, or write it as 32.5, depending on uh, what your applications are. For, for this homework assignment, I'd really prefer for you to leave your answers just as simplified fractions, and that would be great. Okay, so a couple more examples. These next ones um, are a little bit more interesting. Uh, because this time what we have when we're looking at our problems is we have a variable in the denominator. Not a big deal. We're going to solve this exactly the same way that we did before. We want to, first of all, we see this is a rational equation. Uh, in fact, this is the, the, you have to solve it this way because we can't deal with getting those variables alone when they're in the denominator. So we see that equation with a fraction in it. We want to get rid of the fraction. Right now, notice that uh, inside in the variable in the bottom um, that the denominator is D so if we want that D to cancel out what we're going to have to do is multiply by D on each side of the equation so same policy as before we want the D's to cancel so <coughs> we're gonna multiply by D on each side now here in this problem we multiply by D and again you've got to multiply that D by every single term so D times 2 over D minus d, oops, d times 3 equals d times negative 9 over d. I think that looked a little bit more like a d there. All right, so every term needs to get multiplied by the d. Keep in mind that you have to multiply this even if there is no fraction in the problem because it's part of doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. All right, so now let's see what magic happens here. Notice that the d's here cancel out, so I have no fraction, no denominator anymore, and I'm left with just 2. For the next one, there was no denominator to cancel out, so I just have to multiply d times 3, and we're used to seeing the, th um, the number coefficient in front. Then we have the equal sign. On this side, the denominators canceled, and all I was left with was negative 9. So now I have a new equation. It's linear, no fractions, and the D now is on the main level, so I can actually solve for it, which is fantastic. Um, so to get the D by itself, farthest away thing, to get rid of the 2, we're going to have to subtract 2 from each side. Leaves me with negative 3D equals negative 11. And then to get the D by itself, here it's multiplied by negative 3, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. 
that's going to cancel out. Here, the 3 does not go in evenly. 11 over 3 can't be reduced, but the negative divided by the negative we can write as a positive. So my solution here would be d equals 11 thirds. For the last problem here, the same type of thing is going to apply. Notice that I have a 3x and a 2 and a 4x in the denominator, and I need to multiply by something that will get rid of all of those denominators. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start by looking at the biggest thing. I know I'm going to at least need a 4x. If I multiply by 4x, that will get rid of this denominator. If I multiply by 4x, 2 goes into 4, so that will work here. But the 4x isn't going to work for this one. The x is taken care of, but not the 3. So between 3 and 2 and 4, my common denominator would be 12. So I'd like to multiply by a 12 to get rid of all the numbers in each of these. But I also need to multiply by an x to get rid of the x's in, that we have showing up in the denominators of each of these rational equations. So let's go through and write that out. I'm going to have 12x times 9 over 3x from the first term, minus 12x times 1 half for the second value, equals 12x times 3 over 4x. Now is the canceling phase. Keep in mind that in this phase our goal was to get rid of the fractions, so every denominator should cancel out by what we were multiplying by. In this case, the x on the bottom cancels with the x here, and the 3 and the 12 are going to reduce down and just leave me with a 4, and the denominator's gone. So the 4 times the 9 gives me 36 for the first term. When I come to the next term, 2 goes into 12 6 times. The x is still there. So I have minus 6x times 1, which is just minus 6x. For the last one here, the x's cancel in the denominator, so that part's gone. 4 goes into 12 evenly 3 times, and I'm left with 3 times 3, which gives me a 9 here for this part of the problem. So rewrite of the equation by being very clever and multiplying by 12x. I was able to get rid of all of the denominators, and I have a new equation with no fractions. To get the x by itself now, I have to get rid of the 36 and the minus 6. And using our reverse order of operations, the farthest away goes first. Subtract 36 from each side. Over here, we have to do 9 minus 36, which should give you a negative 27. Then I need to divide both sides by negative 6 to finish getting the x by itself. In this case, we actually can do a little bit of reducing. Uh, 3 goes into both 6 and 27. So if we divide the top and the bottom by 3, we get 9 over 2, and then and that's as reduced as it can be. And then we had a negative divided by a negative, so my final resulting solution should actually be positive, and I end up with x equals 9 halves. Really, so that's kind of the idea with these rational equations. If you have a fraction in any type of equation, we can get rid of it by coming up with something that we can multiply both sides of the equation by that will get rid of the denominator. That allows you to get rid of fractions on the problem and solve the equation uh, without dealing with all the fraction rules of, um, as part of the solution process. Your final answers might be fractions, and that's cool, but you really don't see them until the very end, and so it makes all the solving significantly simpler. And in cases where there's a variable in the denominator, this is absolutely essential to do because you have to get that x out of the denominator and up on the main level so you can actually solve for it in the process. The only other thing that you really need to keep be careful of is you should always check uh, your final answers. And that is, and what you want to check for is you need to make sure that your answer would not make the denominator zero. The original denominator in the problem. When we multiply both sides of an equation by a variable, we're assuming that that denominator was not zero at any point in time. So if I look at this problem up here, for example, x could not have been zero. So if I solved this problem and got x equals zero as an answer, I would have to completely discount it because it wouldn't work in the original equation. It wouldn't be valid. So it's just a little thing that you should kind of check for. It doesn't really show up very often, but from a mathematical perspective, it's important. You can't end up with an answer that it would have not worked in the original problem. So here, if x would have been 0, we would have had a problem. Here, if d would have been 0, we had a problem. But d was 11 thirds, and here x was 9 halves. So there's no issue in this problem. Um, in these problems up here that we did originally with problems 1 and 2, notice the variables were never uh, 
in the denominator at all. So there were no restrictions and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, just a little mathematical piece that you kind of want to think about in, in, the, in the back of your mind when you solve an equation where there's a rational um, expression involved.